Uh, my name is Steve, uh, Steve Sforts. Uh, I'm from DevNet, Cisco's developer program. I do coding. I'm an evangelist for Europe, and I love meeting you people. I'll be here for the two days. Then just reach to me or to any other Cisco people here around. Uh, we are really here to help you have a great experience with technology. Some of us speak Italian. Yo puoi parlare un poco italiano, ma mon premier langage c'est le français. And English will be better for all of us today. <laughs> um, the first part of the talk will be about drones. And what it matters, how you can build them, and what are the stakes. Uh, Angelo's got a great experience at Cisco, and he will give you some thoughts about terrific uh, experience we've done in various countries. And he will give you the perspective of how to communicate with drones, how to make them more interactive with humans. And after these 20 minutes, I will, I will come back and we'll show you more things we can do with APIs and how you can put your hands on those technologies uh, because everything is about APIs anyway. Okay? Should you start? Okay, thanks, Steve. And uh, 25 minutes, not 20. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, good morning and thank you to everyone for being here. I'm Angelo Fienga. I'm working in the worldwide sales and strategy team for collaboration. But at the same time, just like uh, my friend Jason here, I'm a drone lover and uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, push. You need, you need the magic fingers. You need to speak. You need to speak really loud. And then can everybody, everybody hear me? Yeah. Do you want me to sing? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Try. Okay. Working now. Thanks, Steve. So again, why drones? Well, you know, drones are just lifts. What we're talking here is not about drones, it's about sensors. It's about sensors and about uh, the opportunity that we have with the thousands, billions of sensors spread all over the world to provide information that you can use uh, to solve problems or create something that is helpful in solving problems. So what's the issue today? The issue is that uh, we have plenty of sensors everywhere, you know, but they are generally not connected, they're analog, you know, they're connected, they're stable, fixed somewhere, or more and more, they're connected to something cool like drones or robots or cars. At the same time, you have people, developers, I mean, people like you that could do a magic thing with sensors, but they cannot access to that, you know, there is a missing something in that, that is uh, something that is connecting sensors and people that are able to convert data from there into something relevant. And of course, it's plenty of customers outside looking for solutions, smart solution to anything, you know, smart cities or uh, a smart enterprise, enterprise 4.0, smart traffic. So, there is something missing. What is this something? And actually, where can we work together to fit this lack? Connectivity and security. Most of the sensors are not connected. And you know, we are working on that. We are going to solve that issue. Um, processing, storage, and analytics. We are taking care of that. You know, we are Cisco. That's our bread and butter. You know, but there are two pieces here that are really, really relevant for me and for the discussion today. One of these is collaboration. Collaboration is about uh, people talking together. But collaboration is also about uh, people and sensor talking together. Why? Because uh, when people and sensor and uh, sensor can interact, well, magic things are happening. Just like uh, I'm going to show you later today. And uh, last but not least, APIs and algorithms. We are here today about APIs. What can we do with APIs? What we can do in particular with Spark and Tropo APIs. So that's why I, uh, I call this, uh, uh, this initiative the IoT of everything. In other words, monetizing the enablement with the Cisco Cloud collaboration. Because again, Cisco Cloud collaboration is the glue that is putting all of this together, that is allowing you to reach out to sensor and to put them in touch with people. A little bit inside the drone now. Okay, why are they relevant? Well, because uh, they are ubiquitous. They can go everywhere, provided you, know, you respect the ANAC uh, and uh, you know, all the aviation authority rules. <laughs> and uh, they can carry sensors. What kind of sensor? gas sensor, um, thermal sensor, um, photogrammetry sensor, um, any, uh, any kind of sensor that can detect information out of what they're inspecting. And uh, algorithms. So you're applying algorithms to sensors that are flying everywhere. And what can you do with that? Well, you can serve multiple verticals in a very, very effective way. The reason why you see those boxes there is because uh, we personally tried with that 
commercial POCs in any of that, starting from uh, quality of air analysis, uh, modeling of service provider antenna, site survey, security, and precision agriculture. All of this required the combination of these three things. You swap the sensor, swap the algorithm, and you can serve a specific problem. And guess what? There are many other problems that are there just waiting for someone to solve them. An example of, uh, I mean, I just landed 6 a.m. this morning from Dubai because, uh, uh, I don't know if you know, but Dubai, according to the Sheikh, is going to be the happiest city in the world by 2017. What does it mean, happiest city in the world? Well, it means a city where it's, uh, it's nice to live, where, you know, problems are solved by someone else from you, for you. And how are they doing this? Applying multiple technologies, including drones, including the capability to pull drones into the virtuous loop of collaboration with people. What we are doing there is uh, leveraging drones to pull sensors such as uh, thermal information, thermal video, and thermal imaging, and feed them into collaboration because their uh, uh, remote control center can see what's happening. Even more, you know, they can pull this into Spark, they can pull this into um, analytics engine to provide feedback to systems such as you know the traffic light management so that they can change the way the traffic light works because of the information they get as you see this is sensor information drones and collaboration put together this is a pretty example that is running right now how are we achieving this well with something pretty interesting uh, we put uh, some special spice into the drone special spice like this. So this is a Cisco internally developed project that is uh, something that is hooking the sensor, as you see there, um, thermal and video, um, photogrammetry and gas with collaboration. This is uh, squeezing every kind of information that are coming from the external sensor into a digestible way for people to apply algorithms into that. And Spark and uh, Tropo are the enabler based on that. And all of this information goes through the network in a secure way over VPN. At the end of the day, we are Cisco. We, are, you know, we want to make things secure and safe. It's going into um, you know, the, the video streaming, into the Spark solution, as well as into the analytics engine. To provide what? To provide the information about uh, how to solve a problem. What I'm going to show later today is something that I strongly suggest you to test yourself. So within the DevNet, uh, um, uh, the DevNet uh, uh, solution that we are providing, you can register and go into the IoT place. And you can get what I'm going to show in a few minutes, that is uh, what we call the DevIoT. It's a piece of software that we are running in a um, Raspberry Pi. Actually, this is a Raspberry Pi 3. It's nothing special. It's a simple hardware that hooks the sensors, in this case uh, gas sensor and video sensor, into collaboration. So essentially we are gluing the capability to interact with people through a spark room or through an SMS via you know, a simple piece of code that you can manipulate. Again, this is just one of the use cases you, uh, you can enable. How is this going to be relevant, for instance, for the smart city? So what you see here is a uh, a customer portal about uh, what you can get out of the sensor information. 3D image, object recognition. This per se is relevant, but what is even more relevant is what you can do when you detect issues associated to that. For instance, you have a, a gas leak or you have an oil leak on the street. This is going to cause a car crash, for instance, or it's going to procure a um, manual loss because of you know wasting water and oil well you can immediately alert people leveraging collaboration you can immediately put uh, people with the best updated information about the issue to allow them to solve it in a in an easier way being a happy city the, the happiest city in the world means to have a very very specific and low slas so service level agreement uh, with their citizen. For instance, I think they have a, a SLA to be able to reach out a car crash uh, location within four minutes. How can you do that? How can you be there with a, a good situational awareness, a, a information about what's happening without, uh, you know, without knowing what's happening there? Well, pull the collaboration into the loop and get what the sensor is sending to you inside the, a virtual circle of people and sensor working together. Other example of what you can do. Again, this is another um, 
POC, the proof of concept we did for uh, the largest service provider in Europe, analyzing uh, antennas with drones, of course, and sensors and collaboration. It means being able to provide the service provider with uh, immediate information about issues that are happening, including uh, um, radio interface issue. I don't know if you know, but uh, this is possibly going to create service provider very high fines at the end of the year if they're not respecting SLA. They get in the moment they're subscribing, actually they're buying um, frequency, license for the frequency. So they have to respect SLAs. And this is actually what we are, um, what we're helping them to do. And then the last example, I think this is uh, clear to everyone because it's extremely, extremely, uh, you know, uh, relevant uh, with respect to what's happening every single day. So it is a preemptive and reactive kind of use case. So the capability to run a solution that is measuring, is monitoring the quality of air. So a drone is, a, I say, a lift. Actually, it's exactly what it is. It's something that is able to carry sensors almost everywhere. And this everywhere can be, for instance, a fire, can be, um, um, you know, a plum leak, can be a flare over a chimney. So it can be any kind of a source of pollution that can impact human health. Uh, I don't want to go through the use case that, uh, or to the issues that we have here in Italy in the past 10 years, but, you know, you can imagine from north to south how many times something like this could have been helpful to help solving problem immediately or prevent problems as well. So this solution is actually something that is uh, uh, interesting per se in providing uh, um, processed uh, information, but um, uh, post-processing information, but also real-time kind of information. And this is actually what I'm going to sh uh, show you in a, in a short demo right after this. But just to be respectful of time uh, for my colleague uh, Steve, so what are we talking about here? We are talking about uh, not drones. We're not talking about drones. We're not talking about uh, only sensors. We are talking again about the capability to gather all the information you can uh, extract from sensor and make them and, and use them in the best way to provide the best uh, solution for the service, for the problem that you're going to solve for your customer. And this can only happen when you're putting the people's skillness, the people's brightness, uh, in conjunction with sensor, applying algorithms, applying the capability to solve, uh, you know, whatever issue with uh, the combination of more information possible, so sensors and uh, algorithms. Collaboration and IoT are, yes, okay, I got, collaboration and IoT are the enabler for this. And let me give you a very, very short use case so Steve can jump in with... <coughs> this solution. Can I do this? Okay. So this is Dev IoT. So essentially what I'm showing here is a, uh, is a bridge between IoT and collaboration. Download this from DevNet. As you can see in the data motion, you can define, you can look at the code, you know, in the, in the DevNet. You can define use case. So for instance, if the methane sensor, so the methane sensor is actually collecting the data uh, from you know the methane sensor to the connected to the to the raspberry if something is happening so if the methane is a uh, the methane sensor is triggered by some specific uh, gas methane in this case then something has to happen and this something is something associated to collaboration as you see here what we are doing is uh, sending an sms or pushing the information to a spark room why because uh, i need to be alerted as soon as possible that something bad is happening so what I'm going to do very, very quickly is uh, showing how it works, how does it mean from a real uh, use case perspective. As soon as uh, the sensor is triggered, what is going to happen is that uh, and information is uh, analyzed within the, 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 the Raspberry, within the code, and the hook with Spark and Tropo are sending information out of the sensor itself to the people that are supposed to solve it. As you can see, if I go to my Spark room, you get uh, immediately an information saying, uh, ah, identificate una fuga di gas, scappate. 
as well as uh, I got the same message running on my phone so that, uh, you know, what is the best or, or actually the most used so far way to communicate with people? SMS, okay, it's here. What is the next one? Messaging, it is there. And guess what? What we are going to do is adding the two-way communication so I can communicate with the sensor and with the camera and ask, please send me a picture of the place where you are. That's how you solve problem in the most effective and uh, I would say in a remunerative way for you. I think, uh, Steve, uh, I run out of time. Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. And I think we can get question after this. Good. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, I think you can keep that one. Yeah. Which? Oh, sorry. This is code. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> um. Yeah. Then, now let's have fun. Let's see what we can build with those technologies. Um, this is a number? This is a phone number? This is, is it a normal phone number? It's Italian? Welcome it's to Code Motion 2016. It's free to call. It is now 11.49 a.m. in Milan. It speaks. Here are the next 10 activities. IBM Watson Conversation Machine Learning Tools. It's a program of commotion. Capabilities and natural language this Friday at 12. It gets you exact time Dial now. What's happening now at commotion? Two for next it speaks activity. it to you. And three for it can speak in activity. any language. Do you want it to speak Italian? We'll see that later. Okay, I'll Sorry, to do that. I did not receive your answer. I Moving forward to next activity. You can try Beyond it by yourself. Why this you call that number whenever you want. You can call it Dial now, you can call it later. It can be 1,000 people Two calling it simultaneously. We don't care, it's a cloud activity. platform. It's Tropo cloud platform. We scale it Got automatically. It. And I'm going to show you how damn easy it is SMS. to build these pieces of codes. Moving to um, next activity. You can mix Connie SMS if you dial one. You receive details by SMS. Shoot. Uh, details from your own code. And then you can check that the session is OK. And then what you can do is you reply to the SMS. And you, when we, we reply, your code will get the answer. And you can get, do something with that. What I did here is to inject you in a Cisco Spark room. The same tool I showed you before for messaging. It should, you could have some more people get in there if you need, if there's an emergency. And then you can start chatting all together. How do we do that? Yeah, so there's no magic here. It's just APIs at work. REST API, standard calls, easy to run. And this is the whole architecture. I won't go into the details now. I have a session at 2.10, where it will be in the same room, where we will go in every detail of this architecture and the code, the pieces of code. For now, I just want you to get the big picture of it. And first, Tropo. Jason's home, Jason's first family just before joining us. And great job that team did uh, for you. Very well-known brand in US. Not that well-known in Europe. That's the reason why some people like us are jumping into these sessions. What does it do? It's cloud APIs. You don't have to install anything on your laptop. You just do REST calls and you have native communications with your phone, whether it's voice or SMS. How does it work? You don't have to learn any complex protocols or all that. We made things simple for you. Uh, we have its REST calls and we have embedded them into a SDKs, kit, functions that are specific to each language. You can code in Ruby, you can code... What's your favorite language? Who is a Ruby developer? Okay, we've got one. Shoot. Perfect. You'll come after because I want to give a special gift for you. Okay. 
You deserve it. And Java, some people do Java? Yeah, sure, okay. Then we have Groovy. And Python, any Python here? Wow, cool, I love Python. Yeah, networking, scripting. Um, and JavaScript. Yeah, <laughs> okay. This session is about JavaScript, Z102, um, but all languages work the same because we have added the exact same functions. Then if you want to say something for your code to talk, you just add the instruction say. And everything you put, the string will be speech to text. Text to speech, sorry. And your voice will be chosen and will be speaking to the people. And then you can start a conference, you can record what's being said, you can do all that in a single line of code. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, we've got some labs right in this room. And you can, they are very short, 15 minutes. You jump in, you create your account, 15 minutes is the total time, and you can start building your own IVR and code. Um, maybe I show you what it looks like at the end of the day. Um, can you see my screen? No. Okay. Then, this is a piece of code you will write. Hmm. Maybe it's not enough for the person in the back. Yeah. Is that better for everybody? Okay. Then, debug, wait, you say, you say something. Welcome to Code Motion 2016, just what we were saying. Yeah. You know how to translate that to Italian? Yeah, just give me the translation and you change the voice to an Italian voice and it will be speaking in Italian. Okay. We speak almost every language you know. Portuguese, Portuguese from Brazil, you can say voice and male, female voice, you just choose your voices. And several per language, depending on the tone you want to have. And then you can say, then what was the next thing? Uh, we were asking, asking the person to give a feedback. You know, giving a feedback, it's as asynchronous. It's complicated to get a feedback when you write your code. Um, how did we build that? It's a single line of code. When you go to Tropo, it's there. You ask, ask whatever you want. It's code, it doesn't turn out again. Just take a variable summary, you add something, it builds a string, you ask in a voice, you give the choice, the options, zero, one, two, three. And in your code, in your, code, in your own code, all you'll have to do is to do a switch. And it's there. I uh, don't have the switch part here. Okay. This is where the thing happened. Oh. Yeah. I'm good. You get your value. You pass it. You take your case. Case number zero, one, two, three, four. Are you ready to implement a Tropo voice machine? Do you feel like you're empowered? Easy? This is the power of APIs, you know? Us at Cisco making it easy for you to do this work and to try to innovate. Imagine new kinds of interactions. And sending an SMS, it's exactly the same. You do a say and you change the network, the delivery channel. You say, now it's SMS. And it sends an SMS. That easy. Then, Spark. What is Spark? Is it the first time you hear about Cisco Spark? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. If you're not working at a professional company, uh, you don't have a lot of devices, video, video conference. Cisco is number one in terms of quality for video conference. You can connect people together and we work. I do remote. I'm a remote worker. I very rarely join um, my any office. I just move around, but I'm always connected with video with very good quality and I have meeting every day. And how does that work? You want to do meetings, 
But you would love to have the same tool to do messaging, meetings, but also to give a call to anybody in your organization. This is the Spark experience. Chat, calls, and meetings with video and dashboards. You can whiteboard, you can work on. Um, at the end of the day, the tool is pretty easy because you create a room, you put people in there, it's Steve, it's Chazen, okay, and you just go and you s give it a name, support room, code motion, and you start speaking. Hi. And if you want to, for example, start a conversation because chatting is not enough. You just go in the door, you press a button, now my camera is on. Hey, can you see me? Jason, how do you do? <laughs> see, this is collaboration today. Collaboration is not, yeah, what's the phone number? How does I reach to the people? Should I chat to him? Should I change tool if I need to start a video? <laughs> All this needs to be integrated. You know, you, you want interactions right away. Maybe it's for your team. Maybe it's for your customers. Maybe it's for your partners. You don't care. You always want one tool integrated experience. This is a Spark experience. Um, remember what I showed you? This uh, um, IVR. Now here. This is what this is ChatOps. In real time, I now have all your phone numbers, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we can have a party tonight. I can call you <laughs> and we can party all together. Um, purpose here was not to get your phone numbers, okay? I, I've already forgotten them. Uh, purpose here is, it will, is to, to understand as soon as you have a back end system, you never know what's happening in there. It just deployed. And what is a real time activity? How many people are trying stuff? Now I have real-time information. I can take decisions. I can put more people in there. Oh, let's invite Jason so that he sees what's going on. I add some more people. Jason, just get in there. You have some information. Let's invite Anna. May I present Anna? She's working a lot with your ecosystem in Italy. Then just reach to Anna and they will be very pleased if you have done any Cisco integration, we want to talk about your prototypes or anything, Anna is the right person to connect to and to start talking, speaking, getting goodies. Yeah, she can do everything. And Anna, Testa, and Enrico, the guy. You don't want to meet him, but I put him in there. <laughs> oh, perfect. Pictures you've got on your phone, working. Okay. Then you can do some debug. Then here I have some very detailed, all my logs, I put it in there. And I've got, you know, I've got hundreds of IVR voice machines. I do software as a service for more than 10 years now. And all my backend systems, they, they, they throw their logs. Sometimes it's in there because it's easy to read. And when it gets an alert, then I want to switch to SMS. And this is the power of API. Um, how easy is it? Who has never touched an API? Don't be afraid. REST calls, REST API calls, everybody does it? Okay, then you should all understand that. On top of Spark, we have added some get, post, put, delete. Yeah, get, you get, post, you create, put, you change, and delete, you remove. And then we put some very, very simple concepts. People, you get the directory, you know what it is. Room, post, room, you create a room. Oh, let's do it. Let's do that. Do you use Postman? Who uses Postman? Yeah, best tool ever, best tool ever, okay. Who has a better tool than Postman? Come to me, I, I would like to learn that. Uh, I like to do scripting with Postman. Uh, we have a free collection. Um, I will show you the DevNet resources right after. Uh, this is not that Postman. Uh, this is this Postman I want. 
Uh, Postman Collections is a group of requests that are ready to run. Um, we have built that at, at DevNet. I can take the room collection here. And I say I want to create a room. Just click on there. Which? I don't need you anymore. Then it's a, what is it? It's a post. And the API, the API is V1. We care a lot about backward compatibility. The API has been out for, I would say, 10, 11 months now. It's still V1. It doesn't break. We have added a lot of functionalities. It is the exact same API for you since day one. Because we add properties and we take care. Someone at a place called Jose de Castro takes a lot of time thinking about that designing. We were talking earlier in the keynote about designing the experience, how to make things simple. Uh, believe me, it takes a lot of time to build. And if you want to share with Jose, he will be happy. Sometimes he does some conferences. He can share his experience at Cisco. And we also do a lot of tutorials. Then let's do it. You post. You put your token in there. And then you put a body. And we are not at Cisco Live. This is Code Motion Live with Geeks, you look like geeks. Send it. Um, my token is dynamically injected uh, through that environment. I have a lot of bots here and tokens. Uh, you can take the labs. You will learn to do that. And see there now? Wow. I've got a room. You want to put any message in there? Let's go back to the collection. Um, I'll pick. The messages, I create a message. Up, up, send. Let's go back to my room. Did I send it? Up. Messages, send. What's in there? Token. This is a plain text message. OK. This is a message. Two API calls. You want to add people? Membership endpoint. Want to delete the message? Delete it. You want to, what do you want to do? Oh, maybe you want to build a bot. <laughs> yeah, I love bots. Yeah. My job is to write bots. Okay. That's a good job. <laughs> if you like it, just join the DevNet. We have got a lot of open positions. Uh, creating a bot is like we've got a specific session. Oh. On it, I won't go into the details. You can join us at two, um, or you can just take a lab. Um, introduction to Cisco Spark apps, and you can jump right away. If you only have 15 minutes, I advise you to go to the second lab. You don't even need to have a laptop. We have 45 laptops up there. Then, what's the final message? Oh, getting interaction, human interaction is essential. It's not only about building your app, creating your data, building this awesome process, connecting technology, wires, cables together. It's also about how do you engage with the users. And engaging is finding the right channel. It's the best way to communicate. Whether it's messaging, videos, phones, alerts, all possibilities. And this is what we bring with Cisco Spark and Tropo APIs. I didn't show the conferences, transfer, a lot of other features, just the basic ones. but. Be sure that you can find everything in there. Even recording or getting transcripts, you will be interested. Everything that has been said, you know, sometimes it says, hey, after the beep, you, the beep, you may be recorded. Just it's one instruction with Tropo. You can add that to your apps today for regulation re reasons. Oh, then DevNet is a large community. Not large enough, because I'm pretty sure most of you don't have a Cisco ID and a DevNet profile yet. Then just jump in. The best part of it, uh, I wasn't part of DevNet a year ago. And I didn't know a lot about, uh, I knew about APIs, sure, uh, but I didn't know a lot about network programmability, camera, device, sensors, all those stuff. I'm learning it with sandboxes. Sandboxes are hardware in all data centers that are pre-provisioned for you. You click on a button, and all this piece of hardware is for you. You connect with a VPN and you can program against it. In minutes, you're learning 
I don't know what, whatever you want to do, programming your network, dis connecting with a camera, getting a real-time information with all those hardware. And if you're successful about it, you connect to your Italian team, and they will, if, I'm pretty sure they will be able to not give, but send you some hardware for a limited period so that you can grow your prototypes. Um, yeah, this talk is over. I will take your questions. We can meet again. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, this afternoon, I talked about it, the labs, and tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a great session with Jonathan. Uh, we'll talk a lot about video. If you want to learn what is what are the video stakes and where Cisco, what Cisco is doing with video and how we're going to simplify the experience and help you integrate video, not in Spark, but inside your apps. The same experience we have now, you could have it inside your app without touching Spark at all. It's video on demand for your applications. Okay, just join the session tomorrow morning. And play with the IVR, please. I want to get all your phone numbers. Thank you very much. Can you join? Any questions? Please go. Best question gets a goodie. Ah, okay, no way. <laughs> No. <laughs> I want to stay out of jail. I can fly it. <laughs> How many of you have, have, have their own drone at home? Not that many? Oh. Would you love to have one? There's, I don't have one yet. Um, but I do a lot of hackathons. Hackathons are, are just places where you learn to prototype and you join for a weekend and they are mentors. I am one of the mentors and generally there are prizes. Okay, and most of the, I have been with Jason and the team, Adam and a lot of other friends and great people you want to mean, meet. Um, very often we offer some drones or some bunch of money so that you can, you can, you put your hand if you win. Of course, you need to win. Just come with your friends and you bid a great prototype during the weekend. And at the end, maybe you'll get your drone. Okay. Uh, there's one next week in London. There's one, there was one in Roma. It was not a long time ago. And we will have more. Just connect to Anna, Twitter, to Enrico, and Cisco Italy. And we will talk about those hackathons. This is a good place to learn. And this is a good place to put your hands on and to have the mentorship like you can have in the code labs. And it's also a good place maybe to Steve, I think, win a drone. Uh, I think it's worth to add that, uh, you know, most of this is, uh, is actually, I mean, you already have in your home, you know, Raspberry or Arduino, stuff like that. And the APIs, I mean, use all of this. It's for free. Maybe we forgot to mention. So you can get access, register yourself, and get access to all the goodies that you have in Cisco DevNet for free, including the capability to use... Uh, SMSs and to test SMSs, you know, and uh, yeah. actually what uh, Steve made today, you can do yourself, you know, without any charge.